We've spent months designing and building this formula car, but today, the computer decides. We're sending over our 3D model to the guys over at Airshaper, and they're gonna run some CFD simulations and reveal the truth about the current designs. Since I pretty much live in the middle of nowhere, we couldn't do one of those fancy in-person meetings. Instead, we jumped on a call with Visme and Wouter from Airshaper. There's a lot to unpack in this video, so I'll do my best to break down the simulations and explain the information they shared with us. The airflow is very much a 3D aspect. Uh, so that means if the flow wants to just go lateral, uh, which is the case uh, towards the end plates, you will see some flow separation as the air wants to jump to the side of those end plates. The chart that they're using here shows the 3D pressure clouds. And the red areas are where the airflow is separating from the car. Flow separation happens when air can't stay attached to the surface of the car, and instead, it pulls away into turbulence. On a race car, that's bad for a few key reasons. It increases drag. When airflow separates, it leaves behind a low pressure turbulent wake. That wake literally pulls the car backwards. It kills downforce. Race cars rely on clean attached airflow to create low pressure on wings, floors, and bodywork. Turbulent air, it's just unpredictable. Downforce can suddenly change with speed or steering, and it can make the car feel inconsistent in the corners or, or harder to drive at the limit, and it ruins downstream components. Separated air doesn't just affect one part, it affects everything behind it. Turbulent air hitting the wing or the diffuser can make that part less effective, even if the design is good. In short, flow separation makes the car slower, less grippy, and harder to drive. Sorry. Yes, you see the front suspension, so that is definitely that's definitely an area um, where you're losing energy as well. Of course, these are already aero profiles, but you'll see that sometimes the air doesn't go perfectly horizontal um, and the local angle of attack uh, can actually impact the efficiency of using an airfoil. So basically what he's saying is our nice round suspension tubing isn't very efficient. But it also explains why Formula One suspension is designed the way it is. Once you understand how flow separation affects the air around the rest of the car, those shapes start to make a lot more sense. Um, also the side air intakes. Um, probably there were radiators that for now they were modeled as a solid block. If you would model them as a real radiator, some airflow would pass through, but still it's likely that the pressure buildup in the side channel is too high and so some of the air, instead of entering the side air intakes, will want to go around them via the sides and via the top. And because the sharp edge is there uh, to go to the, towards the top, you will get a, a bit of flow separation there as well. Which is why you typically have more rounded side pots or side air intakes um, to provide a bit of a softer ramp for the air to stay attached as the air curves towards the top and towards the sides. Since the radiator was modeled as a solid volume and one of the engine side openings into the bodywork wasn't included, the internal flow results within the side pod are somewhat skewed. But we are seeing flow separation develop along the top edge of the side pod. That separation is happening where the side pod transitions into the bodywork, creating a hard 90 degree angle that the airflow struggles to stay attached to. Um, so where the connection elements in the middle, those two vertical struts, where they connect to the bottom surface of the wing, which is the suction site, that area is really sensitive to flow separation, um, which means if you disturb it by attaching an element to it, um, you can cause flow separation and the flow doesn't reattach anymore because it's already struggling to stay attached because it's a low pressure, high velocity suction site. That this is why on some sense. wings... Yeah, they have like yeah. the mount from the top, right? That's why, yeah, they call it swan neck uh, spoilers or wings, sorry. Long story short, we've got a few problems, but before we dive into drag coefficient numbers and downforce data that I know you guys all love, there's a few more tabs we need to explore and they've got some really cool data. Next up is a surface friction tab. Anything shown in green represents high speed airflow, which is good. Anything in red is slow moving, high friction air, which is bad. One key area that they pointed out here was the front wing. It looks like the airflow is starting to delaminate from both the upper and lower wing elements, which isn't ideal. I think I used a slightly different airfoil in the simulation compared to what's actually on the car, so hopefully that works out in our favor in the real world. We also took a look at the floor, and one important thing to notice here is these black lines. So you can see that there's airflow going left and right, those streamlines, those black streamlines aren't perfectly parallel. Um, and that's also very important. If you have an underflow, 
you are creating a low pressure area, which means you're drawing air in from the sides. And when you have cross flow, some lateral flow, when it crosses your um, diffuser baffle, so it's traits, um, you can create vortices, which can be beneficial because the vortices are basically helical or, or coils of high speed air. And high speed air means low pressure, which means downward in your car. Um, but overall, I see attached flow across most of the surface here on the bottom of your car, which is good news. So what does all of this actually mean? Even though the model is showing some clear flaws, we're still managing to generate downforce. And using the forces tab, we can now start to quantify that. Things like drag coefficient, lift coefficient, and our overall lift to drag ratio. Drag coefficient is a measure of how efficient a car's shape is. Lower means less drag, but in racing, that isn't always the goal. Modern race cars accept more drag to create more downforce and more grip. For example, Let's compare my car to a Formula One car. Our car has a drag coefficient of 0.647, which is lower than a modern Formula One car at around 0.9 to 1.1. F1 cars intentionally accept more drag to generate massive downforce and grip. So while we have a relatively low drag coefficient of 0.647 and our lift coefficient number comes in at minus 0.816, that gives us a lift to drag ratio of about minus 1.26. Lift to drag ratio basically tells you how much downforce you're getting for every unit of drag you're paying. The higher the magnitude, the more aerodynamically efficient the car is. For comparison, a modern Formula 1 car can achieve lift to drag ratios on the order of negative 3 to negative 5, depending on the configuration. That means for every bit of drag, an F1 car is generating multiple times more downforce, which really highlights just how aggressive and efficient their aero packages are. Now I hope that didn't bore you guys, and it was really cool to see all the data on the thing that we built. Now it's pretty obvious while you design something in CAD, before you build it, obviously, Unfortunately, when we started this project a couple of years ago, we didn't have any experience in CAD or engineering or anything really important to the build. We just decided to start building it. But it's great to know and learn these terms for a future build if we do intend on building another car, which I really do want to do. Just finishing this one is taking a lot of time. But that's kind of what this whole build has been about. Just tackling things one piece at a time, learning, developing, and just improving slowly. So huge shout out to the guys over at Airshaper for helping me just figure out some of the data and getting me some cool visuals. And if you wanna know more about any of their products, all the links will be down below. And on the next video, we're building the panel that goes all the way to the back. We're gonna cut out those radiator bars and we're gonna fix those the way that they're supposed to. And we're gonna try and mount the floor. So we're gonna mount the floor, get the front body lined up and get the rest of the body lined up. And it's gonna start looking like a cart, I promise. See you guys in the next one. Peace easy, get that V.